My earliest musical memory is sitting in the back of a Plymouth station wagon. I was three years old, singing Downtown by Petula Clark. I was always exposed to lots of different kinds of music. My mom was a piano teacher, so we, we all four of us kids took piano lessons. In fact, three of us wound up getting our degree in classical piano. It just was always a part of my fabric and a part of my atmosphere. I woke up and called this morning The tone of your voice was a warning That you don't care for me The best tools for writing a great song are listening to the greats. I was able to play by ear. I could sit down and play anything, and that actually really got in the way of my becoming a legitimate musician, is that I could hear what the piano teacher would play and then play it back to her. And so my classical was pretty short-lived. But I grew up, you know, learning. I was a piano player, so I, I learned, you know, Elton John, I learned Carole King, Paul McCartney, you know, mostly piano-oriented stuff. I grew up with the Beatles, I grew up with Stevie Wonder. I got into Stevie Wonder right, right around nine years old, and I would go in and sit at the piano with the lights out just so that I could sort of experience what he, he might be experiencing where he's just playing his heart. I was a, an elementary school teacher in St. Louis right out of college. I immediately got in bands because that's what I had always done. I was in a band and a producer came into the club where I was singing, actually I was the keyboard player, and asked me if I would come in and do a jingle. And I came in and it was for McDonald's. I had to sing, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. <laughs> that got picked up wow. nationally and I wound up making in about an hour's worth of work more than I made in two years of teaching. It was that experience that taught me how to learn, how to, how to sing on a microphone, and how to use my voice in different styles, and, and that, that tape of jingles is what took me out to L.A. and got me started as far as singing back up. Gonna feel like hell tonight and Tears of rage I cannot buy Are you strong enough to be my man? My I always really enjoy being the side person, um, and it took me a really long time to actually get my footing with being out front, but with Michael, there were so many aspects to that that I'm still kind of wrapping my, my mind around. I mean, first and foremost, um, ABC was the first album I ever owned. Very surreal in cutting your chops as a backup singer in front of 75,000 people. So the work ethic and observing someone who clearly, as we know, 
had some had some damage, but he also was able to step into this thing that I call divinity better than anyone. He could channel something else that I think is what Carlos Santana talks about when he says he changed the molecules. And you know, you don't have 70,000 people having an experience, an emotional, artistic, communal experience if you don't have something that's rare. And he, he had that. And being able to stand behind him and, and watch that was training like no other. The first album didn't didn't hit. I mean, nothing picked up until like the fourth single or the, the third single, All I Want to Do. We had already been on the road for a year and a half. In fact, I laugh about it. When the album came out, the only two places that played it were Colorado and France. So it seemed like we were always touring around Colorado and then we'd go to France and we'd, you know, tour around France. It was becoming pretty successful, but after the Grammys, it was a completely different thing. You would be nominated and it would put you on the map and then if you won, your record sales would just explode. I mean, it would be the next day that people would go out and buy that record. And um, that was definitely what happened for me. We went back out on the road for another year and a half. And you talk about being sick of a record. You know, we'd been touring it and touring it and touring it and then it took off. When I was on the Michael Jackson tour, Pink Floyd and Prince, we were always all in the same town. I think I saw Pink Floyd on that, in that summer three or four times. I saw Prince in, at his gigs and then at clubs. He and I became friends. He asked me if I'd come to Paisley Park and come play, and so I played harmonica on some stuff. I played some keyboards, I sang. I mean, it was just surreal. And the guy was uh, by far the most talented person I've ever seen. I mean, I just, I've never seen talent like that. I don't know that I ever saw myself as not being a songwriter. I always wrote words and, and wrote melodies. And my relationship to songwriting was not that I wanted to write some cute songs and make a bunch of money. I wanted to write songs that that had the same effect on other people that music had had on me. There is a sense of an unfinished sentence in me that keeps me going back to writing. You know, I still feel like my best work is in front of me.